Flying over water is one of the most common fears in the world, stemming from the perceived lack of landing locations if a plane were to crash. The chances of such an event actually occurring, though, are near 0%, with thousands of airliners crossing oceans every day and dozens of safety regulations ensuring safe travel over large bodies of water. However, there's always the slight chance that something could go wrong, and on the fateful day that was the 24th of August 2001, Air Transat Flight 236 became the flight that defied all odds, with all 306 souls on board finding themselves flying over the mid-Atlantic on an empty tank of fuel. How a modern airliner ends up over the middle of the ocean with no remaining fuel is a question that most would probably ponder over, and on this rare occasion it was a simple mistake on the ground that led to near tragedy hundreds of miles from land. Air Transat Flight 236 was a regularly scheduled transatlantic route from Toronto, Canada to Lisbon, Portugal. The flight was operated by an Airbus A330-200, registered as Charlie Golf India Tango Sierra. The airplane was practically brand new at the time, delivered to Air Transat in April of 1999, with just over two years in service. Flight 236 took off from Toronto's Pearson Airport at 8.52 p.m., loaded with a surplus of fuel for the flight across the pond, and as a matter of fact, more fuel than required by regulations. After the initial departure, no issues came about as the Canadian Leisure Airline swiftly glided its way towards the Atlantic. However, nearly four hours into the flight, now well over the Atlantic, the pilots noticed that the aircraft had begun to lose fuel out of the right engine at an unusual rate. The captain suspected a mere error in the warning system, but the more time that went by, the more warnings that appeared in the cockpit, with the airliner now suffering a major fuel imbalance hundreds of miles from land. Unknown to the pilots at the time was a major fuel leak in the right engine caused by improper maintenance procedures all the way back in Toronto. In order to combat the fuel imbalance, the pilots, under the impression that both engines were completely functional, decided to transfer fuel from the left engine to the right, which resulted in the loss of even more fuel through the pre-existing leak in the right engine. Eventually, the pilots finally declared a fuel emergency, now luckily approaching the Azores Archipelago of Portugal, a small set of islands in the mid-Atlantic nearly a thousand miles from the mainland. While still 150 miles away though, the right engine flamed out due to lack of fuel. Just 13 minutes later, the left engine also flamed out, leaving the airliner loaded with 293 passengers and 13 crew members with no engine power, still over 60 miles from the nearest runway capable of handling an A330, Lajes Airport. The pilots were now forced to simply glide the Airbus A330 the rest of the distance to the airfield, only hoping that whatever remaining airspeed the airliner had built up would be enough. With no engine power, many of the aircraft's essential electrical systems also went out, with no control over hydraulics to operate flaps, spoilers, and even alternate brakes. Also due to the failed electrical system, the cabin was forcibly depressurized, with oxygen masks being deployed for all passengers and crew, still flying well above 30,000 feet. Any significantly lower altitude would likely nullify any attempt at gliding all the way to Lajes, and the airliner would be forced to make a ditch into the rough waters of the Atlantic. Despite losing nearly 2,000 feet per minute, the aircraft's altitude would most likely give the pilots an ample amount of time to perform an emergency landing in the Azores as intended. Still though, this would be no easy task. Given that the aircraft was still fairly high up, numerous maneuvers would have to be performed to lose significant amounts of altitude before the aircraft could even approach Lajes. Of course, all while gliding with absolutely zero power. The probability of an emergency landing in the Azores was practically certain at this point, but of course, the chance of coming in too fast or too high could result in the airliner overrunning the two mile long runway. And with no power, the only control the pilots had over the aircraft's speed was however much drag they would be able to produce. 
Despite the numerous electrical failures, the landing gear and slats were able to be extended in an attempt to increase drag on the powerless glider and decrease its speed. Finally, at around 200 knots, well over the standard landing speed for an airliner of its size, the powerless A330 touched down in the Azores, with a landing so hard that the airplane had a significant bounce upon touchdown, and with the main brake systems being inoperative, the wheels locked up and had completely deflated, being worn down all the way to the wheel axle itself once the aircraft reached a full stop, with less than a fourth of the runway left to go. An emergency evacuation of the aircraft was performed with all passengers and crew making it out of the plane safely, and only 16 minor injuries were sustained from the hard landing. The only damage that the aircraft sustained was that of the landing gear as well as the lower fuselage, also caused from the hard landing, along with debris kicked up by the rollout. It is truly a miracle that what was probably the best case scenario for this rare incident to have indeed played out, with all passengers and crew surviving, and the aircraft even returning to service after some time. Air Transat Flight 236 had also, unintentionally, broken the world record for longest distance glided with no engine power, that being a whopping 75 miles or 120 kilometers. However, the fact that this harrowing event occurred in the first place was undoubtedly a cause for concern at the time. In the end, it was an incorrect part being fitted in the right engine during a routine maintenance check, which resulted in the fuel line being ruptured mid-flight. The fact that such a small mistake can lead to a near disaster of mammoth proportions is almost horrifying to think about, and with this fact in mind, it can be understood why the fear of flying over water exists. Numerous passengers suffered PTSD years after the incident, and given the fact that the passengers on board were instructed to put on life vests preparing for a possible ditch into the sea, it can be understood how scarring such an event like this one would be. Nonetheless, since Air Transat's emergency landing in the Azores, very few major aviation events have occurred over the Atlantic involving a large airliner, which goes to show how uncommon mishaps over the open ocean truly are. Even though it may seem easy for such a small maintenance mistake to occur, the fact that it hasn't happened since truly demonstrates how uncommon of an event that the Azores glider really was. Numerous new safety regulations have also been put into place following Air Transat's near disaster. While Flight 236 serves as a constant reminder to the inherent dangers of flying over water, it has also served as a testament to improving aviation safety, and will always be remembered as one of the greatest miracles in commercial flight. Do let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this video, and if I should make more episodes on interesting aviation stories like this one. But with all that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.